Good. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is uh, Marie-Laure Bouchy uh, Jacobson. Um, I am French emergency physician working in Denmark. I've been working there in 16 years. And that's why I'm going to uh, tell you all about how emergency medicine came in Denmark. So um, it was not that easy. But first, uh, have a look at uh, a pretty uh, a street in uh, Denmark. Maybe you may come one day and, and see uh, how it is. Um, one of those houses here is actually the house of Hans Christian Andersen, the one who wrote uh, The Little Mermaid. But he's been writing something else. He's been writing uh, something uh, which is called Ugly Duckling. And that's an interesting history, thinking about how emergency medicine was born, as we were basically the ugly duckling, uh, thinking about all the problems we had to, to being in that strange world of uh, medicine and uh, find our place. Uh, first, all about uh, Denmark. Denmark is... Uh, a little country, the one with the red plot uh, in the middle of Europe. Uh, this is uh, several countries, uh, several parts, regions. The first is, of course, Denmark, as we uh, see it on the map. Uh, but there is also the autonomous territories of the Faroe Islands and Greenland, uh, which is a big, big territory in the north. Denmark, we are, when we are looking at that, it's uh, a little country with five main regions. Each region has each, uh, uh, its own organization, um, but uh, we have, each region have to apply the recommendation the, the nation, Denmark nation is coming with. Uh, it has uh, 98 different commons. Population, it's a little country, uh, 5.87 million people. Most of them are gathered together in Copenhagen, which is the smallest region of all. But there is, this is a place where all the people are gathered. Talking about uh, the Danish universal healthcare system, uh, the very important part of it is that uh, the Danish care system is a universal healthcare system. That means that most healthcare provision is free for all residents. So the GDP part is 11.2%. It's a huge part. Uh, thinking about the most of other countries only gives maybe two, three percentage uh, of it uh, to health systems. There is no private emergency departments. Most of it is public. Uh, there are private uh, private hospitals but they have an agreement most of them with the, the public service uh, to respect the 30 days therapeutic uh, treatment means you, you, there is a therapeutic guarantee if you are not able as a public service to give some treatment after 30 days you may have help um, with the private system giving you the treatment you, you have to have inside the guarantee of 30 days. So for example, uh, hip replacements, you may have this, this service in a public, in a private hospital. But like any places where uh, when a, pro a problem happens in, during the weekend or uh, when the private hospitals are closed, it is a public service helping again and it is emergency departments in the public service uh, helping again. One other um, very important thing to understand with the Danish health system is that the GP, the generalist practitioner, is very important. It's a central part of the health system. Since the 70s, you have a free access to your GP. And if the GP is a primary referral to any other place in the health system, including emergency services. In 1993, General medicine is uh, now a specialty and uh, general medicine syndicate is making agreements uh, giving 
the collective responsibility of all the GPs in the country to give free access to healthcare 24-7. So the GPs are literally uh, bearing the health system on their, their shoulder and they are referral to all Danish system. But it was not perfect. In 2007, the Danish Health Authority make, uh, is making some new recommendations for emergency sector because there is problems. The motto is quality before proximity. Before 2007, there was often no referred patients, despite on recommendations made uh, in, uh, in the 90s. A lot of different emergency gates in hospitals. You can come in hospitals in an emergency uh, situation from one, two, three, four uh, gates in hospitals, depending on what you, you have uh, of, uh, as a disease. Uh, many hospitals, sometimes you come in directly in the ward. A lot of young doctors without sufficient supervision in the in, uh, emergency departments. Emergency department was I'm sorry saying that, but a kind of garbage, um, um, looking at the other departments. The pre-hospital setting is just to ensure transport. And each and each every hospital have a different system. After 2007, they are looking at that and saying, no, we have to have one only gate and it is emergency department. All patients have to be referred, means nobody can come in the emergency department without being seen by another person before. It could be a GP, it could be 112, it could be any kind of actor in the health system. Just somebody made a decision before coming to the emergency department. You cannot come just and bang at the door. They need a sharp definition of a low specialist physician. Means that they want some mm, more profiled physicians to come in the emergency department. Uh, and they want to have somebody all the time, 24 seven specialists in the front of emergency department. Um, but looking at that, something is missing, isn't it? The missing point is there is no real emergency physician specialist and mentioned in that report. And why that? Because they don't know nothing about emergency medicine and they don't know nothing about emergency specialty at that point. So when they are making some optimization of the uh, health system um, with numbers of hospitals falling down from 96 in 1984 to 43, just before the reform, make came to 21 hospitals, very few of them back in the, in the country. There is still no thought about who is the staff in those big emergency departments, in those big acute hospitals. The staff has to be a specialist, well, but we have to organize, we have to invent it. We have to find a way to manage the ED and it's not written down any place. Um, the way it was uh, working at that time and still working, unfortunately, it's a hybrid model. Every kind of specialty is coming down, sending a doctor down in the emergency department and taking a patient. So if you're a patient coming and just having some orthopedics problem, so you're going straight away and a top orthopedic uh, physician is taking care of you. That's great. You have some kind of lung problem. The lung doctor is coming down and taking care of you. What about you having something which coming in between? Not cardiologist, not lung. You have some kind of dysp dyspnea, but you don't know what it is. Nobody wants you. Nobody wants to take care of you. The cardiologist says it's a lung. The lung says it's a cardiologist. But nobody takes care of you. What's happening? The patient is feeling in, falling in between. Nobody takes it. It takes a patient. So that's why it, there was problems with the previous systems, people fighting, long waiting times to find a specialist uh, agreeing to see you. But a specialist is only watching at the specialty because hyper specialization. And if it's falling apart, the thing, this, this cardiologist or this lung 
doctor is knowing, nobody is taking the responsibility for what is so. And the patient is sometimes discharged without a diagnosis. At that point, here come the heroes. This is all my colleagues in 2005 and 2006 thinking about, we have to do something about that. We have to find emergency medicine from abroad. We heard about that. Most of these people here have been traveling abroad, having experiences from other countries and taking back that this emergency medicine, a specialty, we have to do something about that. And there in 2006, uh, they decided to create the Danish Society for Emergency Medicine. This is where it was born, but it was just born and just few people, those gathered on the picture. Knowing that emergency medicine may be something and uh, the new reform, some hospitals begin to move in that direction. The first one is Culling Hospital, but it's just a little move. Only majors are under the responsibility of emergency medicine physicians. The minors are still ruled by the orthopedics. There's a few seniors, a lot of juniors, not sufficient supervision. There's an observations unit, but other special specialists are coming down and visit the patients. In 2010, uh, things are moving and the DASM, the Danish Society of Emergency Medicine is creating a competency. And why so not the specialty at first? Because our own new, brand new professors in emergency medicine who were founded uh, inside uh, internal medicine and other specialties, thinking emergency medicine may be interesting. They were not the one of the pictures. They were professors, sometimes never heard about emergency medicine, but taking the title as a professor in emergency medicine, they were against the specialty. They were not really moving in, a, in the same direction as us in the DASM. So they're saying, no, I don't want a specialty. So they create a competency so people can apply and the, if they have enough competence in emergency medicine, they can have the competency in emergency. At the same time, people wanted to, wanted to be um, a medicine physician. They are encouraged to take the ABEAM, European Board Examination in Emergency Medicine, which is a European very tough um, special kind of specialty. It's not a specialty, but it gives you a level uh, which is the same in your, all Europe as a specialist in emergency uh, medicine. In 2016, a founded report uh, made um, uh, from uh, DASM is uh, writing down why we have to have an emergency uh, specialty. They base uh, all the reports on a lot of research, a lot of studies, some Danish studies, some international studies, trying to give the proof that emergency medicine is actually what we need in the country. DASM is uh, having some strategies in the meantime, the focus on education, trying to find the subjects, some which uh, is are not taken uh, from other specialties or not enough, enough. So we are talking about procedural sedation, shock toxicology, ultrasound. They are, we are making some collaboration with some other specialties, typically uh, surgery wanted to, uh, to work with us, uh, cardiology wanted to work with us. So we define where emergency physician have to work and where the other specialties uh, have to work and where we're meeting together in the patient's uh, treatment. We are working a lot on national and international networking to find ways to move on. Uh, with first national multidisciplinary conference in 2008 already, and we participate to other conferences, European conferences, and we send some people in strategic uh, positions in different boards. We are trying to move on and trying to find some specialist anyway. So we are making a collaboration with Sweden where the specialty have been there since 2015. And we're sending some people to be educated between Sweden and us uh, to have a, uh, a kind of merit uh, specialization 
inside uh, Sweden. So we, we, we are going to have some specialists anyway. Um, at the same time, DASIM is uh, working on own courses. We are making our own emergency course. It's not ATLS, it's not ELS, it's something quite different in another approach. Uh, some uh, we are uh, ruling, we're making our own ultrasound courses, not uh, wind focus or something else, just our own Danish certification. And we are working on all the specific course courses for the specialty because we want to work for the specialty. So everything is worked already there before we have the specialty. But people are against us. It's not so easy. This is a Danish uh, medical journal saying that no, 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 no. Emergency med medicine, an uh, medicine physician, they are going to delay patient treatments. So dark powers are around us and the hospital, hospital on the right uh, and the bottom is the one writing down this article and you can see that's that's how we called it we call it Sauron because in the night you can you cannot see it very well but in the night at the top of this hospital there is a red light just like the tower of Sauron and they don't want us emergency physician but whatever in 2018 Emergency medicine is becoming specialty. Yoo-hoo! And the first of ones, uh, this is my colleagues from Bispebier, one of the hospitals in the region of Copenhagen. Uh, they are uh, acknowledged as specialists on merits because they have competencies. So at that time, we have around uh, 43 specialists. But there were some sacrifices. It was not so easy um, having the specialty we have to make some very, very important compromises. So the anesthesiologist wanted not emergency medicine to have airway management and wanted not emergency physician to have the pre-hospital and was saying to our societies, uh, despite a very hard work from our leaders that uh, if uh, emergency medicine wanted to have airways so there were no emergency specialty they were working very hard against us uh, against our own was among us so we have to compromise um, to make it happen with the specialty we have to say all right we give up airways and pre-hospitals we're taking the whole thing uh, on the side of it and it's the most of it uh, airways and pre-hospital is maybe one person two percent of uh, emergency uh, physicians uh, work anyway but we have to give it up so how to become an em specialist um, you are going through six years uh, university then after that you are coming directly every single doctor is coming directly in a common truck of one year with six months a place six months another place and then you have to apply for an introduction in one specialty. So you have also an introduction in emergency medicine of one year. After that, if you think that emergency medicine is something for you, you can apply for emergency medicine specialty and being registered drug. But it's not uh, automatic. This is not a concurrence. This is a kind of job. So you have to apply for that job being a specialist. If you succeed, you can enter the five years program, which is the same program as written in the EM curriculum. Curriculum. You are uh, traveling between two hospitals and making um, practic uh, practical uh, work in the two hospitals um, in the in with the same program every every place else, less airways and pre-hospital. Uh, on the place, the education is ruled by a specialist in um, education. So there is in every single hospital a consultant who has the responsibility of education. But every single person inside the hospital, every doctor, have also a mentor uh, having the follow up day to day and being sure that the course is the, the competences are obtained. 
uh, there are different kind of techniques written down in the curriculum how to obtain each every competence. Despite, uh, besides the, um, the course in the clinical uh, competency, you have to go to specific courses mandatory in the two main regions of education. So uh, single courses uh, with uh, sitting down and PowerPoint, this is mandatory, but it's not the main thing. We have no exam, just to, you go through the five years and you're done. There's still a lot of challenges now. Um, anyway, there are still a few, only a few independent models, meaning the most of emergency departments in Denmark are still with specialists and few emergency physicians, but not independent uh, emergency physicians. There is not yet enough um, uh, emergency physicians in the department. It's very, it takes a long time having a new generation of emergency physician specialists. So there is not enough teachers yet, there's not enough students entering the residency. We It takes an enormous long time to acknowledge foreign physicians from any place in the world. Um, and we need 600 emergency specialists to start the ED. So it, it's, it's enormous. It will take 30 years with the tempo we have. So we have to to, to, to find another solution. We still don't have enough research and that's uh, a pain point. And we still have hard working conditions like any place else in the world. So the hybrid model is still working and uh, occasionally you may find an emergency physician treating a, a patient beside the other specialties. My own hospital is the ideal in my point of view, a uh, hospital with independent model, where whoever you are as a patient, you are taken by an emergency physician. And we find a diagnosis, we make a stabilization, and then we are sending you after that to the specialist accurately where you have to be, and maybe outside the hospital. So it's, it's the best way of working, but it cannot be before we have enough emergency specialists. So, and this is my last uh, slide, the, um, the priorities we have right now, and this is my uh, president of board, Henry, Henrik Hulmark. We have to focus on, on preventing burnout. Um, the new generation, they are the millennial, they don't want to work as hell. They're, work to, uh, they're watching at me, watching at how I manage uh, the net shifts, uh, my the uh, large amount of uh, work, uh, trying to find out is the specialty for me or not? Is it too much? Uh, is, it a, is there a future? So to, to, to have more people entering the specialty, we have to work so it is a fine environment to be, or those young millennials that, that are finding another specialty, which is better and, and easier. We have to have a common agreement on the whole country on which professional standards we wish to have. This is not enough saying, okay, he's half a emergency physician, he's good enough. No, we have to, to say this standard for good praxis as emergency physician is that high. And this is how we have to work all together. It's not, it's not uh, happening right now. And we have to produce quality learning and quality courses, both outside each hospital, but also inside hospitals. So the quality of our emergency physician has to be high. So people are staying and having what they want. They want learning, they want to have something interesting and we have to produce that. And we have to have more research. So that's what I wanted to say to you. I hope it, uh, uh, it uh, was an enlightenment for how the Danish system is actually working now. And if you have some questions, I, I will be delighted to answer you. Thank you.